Welcome back to the Four Podmen, the wrestling podcast we bring you each and every week on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Audio versions of the show are available through Spotify. And if you'd like to contact the show, you'll get us on Twitter at T Podman. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram, the Four Podmen. Joining me tonight, as always, my partner on the Podman, Ian Kelly. How are we, Ian? All good, my brother. All good. And a very special guest we have on tonight, all the way from Altrincham in Manchester, on For the Love of Wrestling, James Harvey. James, how are you, my man? I'm all right, thank you, guys. I'm all right. I'm great. Sorry if you hear some weird banging in the background. Um, we're not doing DIY. It's, it's it's bonfire night over here. I'm sure it's bonfire night there. So, uh, so there's lots of uh, bumps in the night tonight. Not a bother. Welcome, all. welcome to the show, James. Yeah. Nice to, thank you, nice and thanks for taking the time to come on. Um. Where do we start? Let, let's, I suppose with everything that's happened with COVID and stuff like that, let's let's take a little trip back and talk about For the Love of Wrestling 1, um, which was a mammoth, huge success um, with some brilliant guests and all. Give, give us a run through on that first, James, before we get into part two. Yeah, yeah. So uh, funnily enough, it's, it's a funny story how I actually ended up getting involved in, in For Love of Wrestling. Um, I, like every other wrestling fan on the planet, think I know more about wrestling than everybody else. I'm sure you know. <laughs> it's just a trait of the wrestling fan. So um, I, I heard about For Love of Wrestling like everybody else, so I just came across it on social media. Um, and when they launched For Love of Wrestling initially back in 2000, the end of 2018, um, I think it was, it was... Uh, they launched it straight away, and then the first two guests announced for it was uh, was Ric Flair um, and also Bret Hart, and I was just like, "What is this? Where has this come from?" And very, very quickly, I just started seeing lots of it about, um, but I'd never heard of it. Um, so, I, you know, I just sort of messaged him, and we'll, we'll come on to it in a bit. But obviously, we were just discussing before. I've mm. got quite a big collection of wrestling memorabilia, so I just started talking to the organisers uh, about perhaps me exhibiting there, which they were jumped on board with straight away uh, with me being sort of very local to them. Um, and then sort of things just, just grew from there. But yeah, it was, it was almost, it was born out of another event. So we were just talking about Comic Con Liverpool, which is uh, happening next, next weekend, um, 13th and 14th uh, in Liverpool. Uh, we've got some great guests for that. Sons of Anarchy, Vampire Diaries, uh, all those sort of karate kid, all those sort of wonderful people. Oh, um, awesome. But we've uh, we 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 initially sort of as as you do at Comic Con, you try and get a load, you know, try and get a bit of a pick a mix of guests, um, and they had um, a few wrestling guests over the years at the Comic Con. Gail Kim was there, um, Edge was there one year, Sting um, was there one year, um, which is really quite annoying because we still haven't had Edge or Sting or Gail Kim uh, across at Love of Wrestling yet, and they're three of my uh, three of my all time greats. Um, but yeah, and just the success of those guys being at those events very quickly, uh, it became obvious to the boss, Andy, who's like the Monopoly events gaffer, um, that actually maybe this could be an event in its own right. And that's that's where Full Love of Wrestling came from. Um, and, and so that's how it was born. Uh, it grew massively. Um, Andy really went big with it for the first one. Um, and I mean, when, when I say big, I mean, he had The, the Undertaker as, he's, as, as one of the headline guests. Um, and I mean, that you know, when you're doing your first ever wrestling convention, I mean, the lineup was The Undertaker... Rob Van Dam, Ric Flair, Bret Hart, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, um, Kelly Kelly, Eric Bischoff, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Ted DiBiase. Um, I mean, the, the lineup for the first one was just incredible. Um, and, and, you know, and, and that's really, that's where it came from. I mean, wrestling fans just jumped on board with it. I jumped on board with it. I remember sort of... You know, Comic Cons have been a thing for a while now. You know, obviously started in America, um, but over the sort of the last decade, maybe 10 to 15 years in this country, just with the, you know, uh, the explosion of social media, we've got to hear a lot more about Comic Con type events. Mm. Um, and, you know, I've, I've seen over the sort of the last 10, 15 years, Comic Cons pop up. Um, then, then obviously things like Star Wars cons and, and Lego cons and toy cons. And I mean, even now we've got the, the, in Manchester, there's a rare trainer con. I mean, there's a conference. Oh, and there's a, this week actually has been announced somewhere in Manchester there's going to be a coffee convention, which sounds terrible, but I'm sure if you like coffee, it's, it, it's a big deal. Can you imagine just people just walking around on edge? You'd probably come around out of it absolutely. Boring. Oh, you can imagine <laughs> it. People 
people just climbing up the walls and everything. That sounds terrible. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that was it. So I, I'd obviously watched from a distance as all these conventions popped up, um, but never ever had obviously sort of a wrestling convention. Now, I know because I know the first thing that people will say is yes, there has been wrestling conventions in this country. There has they've been very hit and miss. Um, some have been a total disaster. Some have gone, you know, fairly good, but there's never really been that stable um, annual wrestling convention, which, you know, we as wrestling fans uh, can sort of call, call our own. And, you know, literally after within the first flood of wrestling, it became the, the, the you know, the, the biggest wrestling convention in Europe. And it, it continues to grow now. I mean, this year, well, sorry, the one coming up in April, um, obviously we've meant to do it this year. It's been postponed until next April. Um, that will be even bigger uh, and better. And it, it, it continues to grow. I mean, it'll continue to grow as long as people support it. Yeah, and I was just going to throw a question in there, and I'll just based yeah, go on ahead. that because obviously me coming from a like a pro wrestling background, as you were talking there, James, the wheels in my head are turning, and I'm going, hmm, okay. If I'm putting my promoter hat on, it kind of takes you back, doesn't it? Because obviously for you guys, it's go big or go home. It's kind of like it's your first, you know. I'm sure for you, I'm sure for um, for the guys as well. This was like their WrestleMania moment. Like if this falls on its ass. Yeah, yeah. It ain't, it ain't happening it again. So, like, having, you know, it's kind of one of those things that you can't really build over time as such if you've got a weak lineup. But if you've yeah. got such a strong lineup, like, I mean, The Undertaker sell, sells itself, but to follow that up by Ric Flair and Brett, I'm not going to mention Scott Hall and Diesel, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, to follow it up with, with those three guys, like, that's, yeah. that's huge in, in and of itself, isn't it? So, it is, it is, it is completely, and you're right because I mean, like, you've got there are some amazing companies out there. I mean, like inside the ropes, who we're, who we're great friends with, um, they do they they do loads of sort of like tours and speaking events yeah. and sort of, and even with type events. I love those events. I attend them myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you know, as a fan, and that, that's what they do, and they do it really, really well. Um, I think the sort of you, you're right when it came to a convention. And I think this is where people perhaps tried and failed before. It, it, it doesn't really work if you've got sort of five British wrestlers, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, Coco Beware, and a million dollar man in a leisure centre somewhere. That, that's <coughs> exactly. not going to have the same impact. Where yeah. Andy, had, Andy, Andy just, you know, put his heart and soul into it and a hell of a lot of money um, to get it off the ground and just make it the, the, success it, it, the success it was. And, you know, the response over the weekend was incredible. I mean, it was, it was, it was, like, it was like being in Disneyland uh, as a wrestling mm. fan. You know, mm. I, I was exhibiting there, so I spent a lot of the time around my exhibit, but I was also doing odd jobs, bits and bobs here and there. And you sort of just talking to, you know, there's 5,000 wrestling fans in a room for a day. Uh, which is awesome in itself. Uh, but then you sort of, you tri- you, you're tripping over Kevin Nash. And I remember at one point I turned around and, and Chris Jericho, I just literally turned around and nearly bumped into Chris Jericho. And then Rob Van Dam came over to have a chat with me about my collection. Uh, and then Hacksaw Jim Duggan's beautiful, stunning wife came over um, to, to inquire about um, uh, sort of this Hacksaw Jim Duggan thing that he'd, he'd not seen from, he, he'd never actually seen it. He saw the, uh, the the artworks for it, Star Toys. Have you ever seen the, like, the big ugly Star Toys? Yes. Things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so she, he'd, he'd never actually seen the final product. Uh, so she oh. came over to try and buy my Star Toys thing. Well, so Hacksaw came over first. He realised that it wasn't for sale and then sent over his beautiful wife trying to see if that would work. And, uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> old school, old school. Old school, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's, he's, he, he didn't work on but I mean, that's just the sort of thing it was, and it's it's such a brilliant environment to be around. Um, mm. I mean, and, and I, that it, it does work for me. We had the the horror convention in Manchester for the love of horror uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it's a similar vibe to that. I think people are a little bit more relaxed around each other because they know they've automatically got that in common. Whereas, I mean, a, a, a comic con convention. I mean, you might be a huge karate kid fan, and the other person over here might be a Dawson's Creek fan, or. A, <laughs> <laughs> somebody from somebody there just to meet Jack <laughs> Gladiators, whereas yeah. you're sort of on the same level, but perhaps not. Whereas wrestling convention, I mean, like everybody's on the same level. It was just a yeah. brilliant, brilliant vibe. Um, and you know, I can, funnily enough, before the first full of wrestling, two weeks before I was in New York for, for WrestleMania 35 and I, I attended WrestleCon. I loved WrestleCon. I had the time of my life. It was, I had a real bucket list moment uh, yeah. when I met Jake the Snake Roberts. I mean, he's, you know, he's up for me as an old school fan. Jake's just yeah. one of the greatest. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, that was it. But that, that WrestleCon for me, it was exactly what I 
expected as a convention. I walked yeah. in, I paid my money, I got, to, I met someone, I got my picture, and then I walked out. Uh, for love of wrestling, has always tried to be so much more than that. Yeah. It's, it, you know, there's the, the Q and A, the the exhibits. Um, they have some of the biggest collections in the world there. The prop builds, the, you know, uh, it's just a lot more than a convention, and you know, it's more of, it's more like a festival. Uh, a weekend festival of wrestling and like we have live wrestling there as well so um first one we had uh future shock wrestling um at the next one we're going to have a, an over 18s um tnt extreme show on the friday night and then on the saturday we're going to have a future shock thing as well we've got an after party i mean it is literally a weekend of uh, a weekend of wrestling something for everybody yeah absolutely well, we might have to uh you might have to have a second appearance on the network there mentioning that you do a horror expedition because uh, we uh our convention should i say because we uh, we run a we run a, a horror podcast on here as well. So Oh man, yeah, yeah. Let's get you in touch with the for love of horror guys. I mean, literally yeah. two weekends ago I spent the um as I say I managed quite managed some of like the logistics and stuff. For, for, for Monopoly events so spent, got to spend a weekend with like the guys from Scream and um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space which is my personal oh. favourite horror movie yeah I love it I love it Mo- Monster Squad um, all those sort of oh. brilliant people so awesome, awesome. Uh, so yeah it was, it was great so yeah give me a shout I'll give you, I'll give you details of the, the guys from Full of Horror they were even, even more geeky than me if that's possible <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my next question James not only has Andy made a huge investment in bringing in the talent but he's made a huge investment in the props and the staging and all that kind of stuff as well to bring it to that next level where you don't see that at WrestleCon. I was at that WrestleCon you were at as well. And yeah, I, I was there when David Arquette got the concussion off the table and everything from the guys and everything. I was crazy. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it was real good fun. Um, uh, yeah. Still can't, you're saying he still can't work even after the documentary. <laughs> I think it was more the other guy's fault than his, to be honest. Well, it's always someone else's, although I'm saying that, yeah, poor old Dave has been unlucky with, uh, <laughs> with, with it being other people's fault. Yeah, we we keep true. wondering, actually, is, you know, because David Arquette, he's, he's just such a character. We keep thinking, us, you know, we, we've obviously had the, the David Arquette conversation in the office. We keep thinking to ourselves, is David Arquette a better guest for the horror convention, for the Comic Con convention, or for the wrestling convention. Or all three. <laughs> Walking for everything. <laughs> yeah. For the love of David, for the love of David Arquette. And just yes. David Arquette being prop built. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, but talk- yeah, no, you're right. I mean, uh, yeah. again, I mean, Andy the boss. I mean, uh, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, talk to us about some of the props that was there at one and some of the props that are coming up at two and the staging and all. Yeah, so I mean, it's the, the prop builds at one. I mean, this is the great thing about like, I mean, I, I mean about all Andy's shows, but I mean about just the, the Monopoly event shows. This this isn't a, a guy who woke up one day who just decided, you know what, I want to put on conventions. Andy's Andy's very much a fan of, of all of these different things, and Andy's you know Andy, Andy's got huge collections himself of sort of different types of memorabilia. I think Star Wars is a big thing of his. Um, so, so one of the things that Andy's most passionate about is when he puts on shows, he wants to put on, puts on shows that he would want to attend uh, rather than just, I mean, you know, rather, That's important. Than, just, yeah, yeah, rather important. than just a load of suits in a business, in, in, in an office going, well, yeah. what would people like at a convention? Do you know what I mean? Yes. That, he's, he's a fan. Um, yeah. and, and, and Andy gets very, very excited about prop builds. I mean, like really, really excited about prop builds. Like we had some amazing ones at the horror convention and, Last year there was there were some brilliant ones at Liverpool, but wrestling particularly is a great place for prop builds. Um, we had the original, um, we had the, the the I think it was the first one, so we had the Money in the Bank one, uh, which did really really well. Sorry, not the Money, yeah, it was the Money in the Bank, the ladder and the briefcase. That one went really well. We had the old um, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan studio. Do you remember the sort of oh yes, yeah, nice event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one, that one did really well uh, as well. I'm just thinking, what the ones we had at the. Uh, I sound like the, Churchill there. You got uh, me excited with that one. I was yeah, like, yeah. I looked, I looked <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I mean, you had, pro- the, you had the barber shop, didn't you? We had the barbershop and obviously yeah. we had Marty Ginetti over there yeah. and Brewers as well. And, and do you know, what I mean, as these things go, as these things evolve, it just uh, it, it, it's, sometimes it's a bit like sort of like kids in a sweet shop. It's just like, you know, it's not just good enough to have the barbershop. It's like, why don't we just get people to cut some hair? So uh, Brutus was over there and Brutus actually cut some people's hair while he was over there. <laughs> um, you know, had pictures of Marty, Marty in the barbershop window and all, all, all that sort of awesome stuff. And I mean, it's great as well it, it, and it just adds to the whole event because people people don't feel like they're just constantly moving from one queue to the next there's this this you know loads and loads of stalls selling everything from pop vinyls to ring worn gear to all sorts of weird different and wonderful bits um awesome so there's yeah. prop you know there's the prop bills the exhibits 
um, which are obviously huge as well. There's the Q and A's which go on all day. So, and again, this is one of these why I personally think, and I'm sure I'm biased, why I personally think Flubber Wrestling is the best convention is that for a lot of other conventions, you sort of have one room to meet the guests, perhaps another room where your traders are, and then you have another room where the Q and A's go on. It all happens in the one massive space within Flubber Wrestling. And there's a huge wrestling ring in the middle of it all. And that's where the Q and A's happen. So you can be going around and you can be sat waiting to, waiting to meet one of your heroes like The Undertaker, but then you can turn around and watch like Ric Flair and Booker T do do like a Q and A in the ring. I mean, it's it's just perfect. That's I mean, awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. Very so it's probably cool. very personable. It sounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like you say, Disney left. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, and like one of the best things about for me, the, the last one was obviously we did the live wrestling show, and like you know, and again, this is one of the great things, and this is why it's such good value for money. Yes, you pay your entry ticket, but in your entry ticket, all the exhibits are included, all of the Q and As are included, all of the prop builds are included, the Saturday night wrestling show is included as well. I mean, for the price of an entry ticket, which I think is about fourteen quid or something, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah value for money yeah. um and you know like the last one the wrestling show on the saturday night was awesome because they had a battle royal and uh and, and randomly pete dunn just appeared in it and you know what i mean so uh and just started like throwing haymakers left right and center so it, it, it just it's just a lot of fun uh, you know mm-hmm. to, to be to, there as a, as a fan or, or to be working there absolutely so um we 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 get over for the love of wrestling one where the bar is set right up here so how, how does the planning for for the love of wrestling too begin? Yeah, so it's 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 it's, it's a uh, it's a good question. So you sort of you, and you go back to that WrestleMania sort of WrestleMania one thing. I mean, like you know, we let's just skip over WrestleMania two because trying to hold a convention in three different venues clearly wouldn't work. And and it was a com- <laughs> it was a complete car crash for for WWF as well, which obviously made so much sense why they repeated it for like the Raw twenty fifth anniversary, and it was such a car crash then as well. But no, it was it. <laughs> How, how do you make it better and how do you make it bigger and, and, and how do you get a guest list, you know, on par with people like Flair, Booker T, Rob Van Dam, The Undertaker. And so I think one of the things that's so good about this next one is I think at the first one, we had some amazing guests. We had some great guests and we had some guests who maybe didn't work out quite as well as we would have hoped for. I mean, it's, you never know. It's try, you know, it's about trying and testing. Um, and I mean, everybody had a great time, but I mean, it's, I think this one, I think what we've got this time is I think we've got either good guests or I think we've got great guests. I think I think the the bar, the, the whole bar has been raised on on the sort of the average it's consistent yeah, the average. all the way from the like the bottom is good, but then it gets better. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like even sort of you know like there's no the, you know there's all killer no filler uh, to quote one of my yeah. uh, favorite sort of albums of the God was it the nineties or was it the noughties? No, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so I think that and I mean. There's just it's just a great guest list, and there's been a, a real focus on being able to do group pictures, uh, but also tag teams as well. Because I mean, like you know, we've got the Nasty Boys, we've got Demolition, we've got the Steiners, we've got Money Inc. Um, you know, all those sort of people coming over as well. Uh, but we've also got those headline guests as well. I mean, Jeff Hardy. I mean, like bringing over Jeff Hardy to do his first ever convention. Uh, I think in the UK uh, has been huge. Um, Shawn Michaels. I mean, they don't come much bigger uh, than Shawn Michaels. Um, which is which is going to be awesome, but then again, Trish Stratus, uh, Tori Wilson, Victoria. I mean, like straight out of you, you know, sixteen-year-old me is very, very happy uh, that that these ladies are coming over straight from my bedroom wall. You know, we're going to be working with them very shortly. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, Trish Stratus is. You think about women's wrestling. Trish Stratus is always going to be on that sort of top three list of all time, just because of what she achieved. Um, so yeah, it's 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 just brilliant, and we're adding more to it. I mean. One of the great things we we tried to do this year, if I, if I look at Flover Wrestling One, it was almost like an old school wrestling convention. There was all lots of WCW guys and lots of WWF guys. There wasn't much, you know, probably the the most contemporary guy there was Pete Dunne, and then probably after that it was like the Undertaker or something like that. Um, Whereas this time we've gone, well, actually, people really, really love the old school, but this is a family event, um, and you know what? 
we bring someone's bringing their eight, ten-year-old kid. He might not actually know who Tatonka is. He might not actually know who Tugboat is. He might not really care who, who Scott Steiner is. So we need to make sure it's built for for all wrestling fans. Uh, so there's two big things we wanted to do. First of all, make sure we get some contemporary stars over, uh, and that's what we've achieved um, with with people like Jeff Hardy. Uh, but we've also got the new kid on the block as well, AEW, have, have <coughs> over the last eighteen months, um, and we wanted to get some AEW guests. Um, and I think we've done phenomenal, really, for the for for the for the sort of for, for the first convention when they've been really relevant. So you know we've got Sammy Guevara, we've got Darby Allen, and we've got you know we've got none other than MJF. Uh, and MJF is going to be an absolute who uh, because we you know for me he's, he's probably the best heel in wrestling right now. I think he's phenomenal. He's he's such a throwback to sort of a Rick Rude, Mister Perfect type heel. Um, which is yeah. Perfect for me. Um, but I'm, I'm led to believe. Um, I'm led to believe that he does the events um, as MJF. He's, he's not going to suddenly sit there and go, well, hello, my name's Martin. You know what I mean? He's, he's, <laughs> you know, if you, if you meet an MJF at our show, you're going to meet MJF. No, you saw you saw the picture of him with the guy in the wheelchair. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I it's saw deep. him, I think some kid put something on Hall- over Halloween where he'd, he dressed as one of the AEW guys and... Um, like MJF had retweeted it and said, you've got, and this was like a four-year-old kid, and MJF went, oh, you've got a lisp and your, cos- your costume sucks. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I was just like, and that, that's what I want. I want that from, I want big personalities in wrestling. I'm sort of, yeah. I'm an old school fan, so I like personalities, but I'm also, as a wrestling fan, I'm a bit tired of seeing um, grumpy badasses in black t-shirts because you know we that's primarily sort of 90 percent of the current current wrestling it is um i mean sort of you just go across you know Roman. no Roman, it's nice Jeff it's Roman. nice to see someone live the gimmick you know what i mean so yeah 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's somebody who's actually doing something living and breathing i mean that's why i don't even think it's a gimmick i think it's just him <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he is just an asshole who, who's yeah. good at wrestling <laughs> The, yeah, the, the, the gimmick is the other guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. K, yeah. K Fabe is alive and well in that. When he comes world. home, when he comes home and, and and you know draws himself like a nice hot bath and puts bubbles in it, that's that's the gimmick. <laughs> he, he sleeps in that scarf. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, so I mean the lineup it's 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 just incredible. There's, oh, there's something yeah. there for everybody. There's something there for AEW guys. There's something there for WCD, WCW guys, and there's something there for you know your WWF and your WWE guys. So I think it's not only is the bar being raised in terms of sort of the average quality of a guest, just how now well rounded the event is um, as yeah. as well. Um, yeah. It's going to be so again. Yeah, I think it's the, the bar. It, it's a little bit of a different convention, but the changes are definitely for the better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ian's going to be very happy here. I'm going to get you to talk to me about some of the new props that are coming in for, for uh, number two. Ian's a big WCW fan, so he'll be very impressed. Oh, man. So, so <laughs> do you know what? This is the thing. Because of COVID, we're sort of having to reassess all that. But I know when we originally planned it, when we were going to do the show this April, um, there was things like we're going to do the, the WCW Nitro stage. That's something we're, we're going to be doing. Um, there was talk of the Spanish announce table, which we're doing as well. Um, the Firefly Funhouse, uh, Firefly Funhouse was something we were doing. But as we sort of move into sort of 2022, we're having to reassess it um, and sort of think to ourselves, well, actually, is, is the Firefly Funhouse, is it still relevant? In is it a thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is it still a thing? Or is it going to sort of seem a bit of a throwback? I mean, stuff like the Spanish announce table, yeah, of course, that'll still happen. Um, and obviously the WCW Nitro stage, I mean, who's not going to... That's going to be great, getting like the Steiners on there and getting pictures with the Steiner. Uh, again, Earl, he- Earl Hebner's it. <laughs> Earl Hebner's going to be a guest as well um, next year, and he's doing a great thing where he can actually do pictures with people in the ring, and he's borrowing my wing, my original winged eagle, and he's going to be taking pictures with people raising their arm in the ring. So stuff like that's a really, really nice touch. So that's Keep him away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going to be putting Earl in a sharpshooter. <laughs> I'm a break away. Be like, Earl, Earl wants to be careful of it, you know. <laughs> So, 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 yeah, so, but, you know, I, I was looking at this a couple of weeks ago and I was thinking, so what makes a good prop build? And I mean, I, straight away, I just fall into type and I just start thinking about old school props. So I suggested like uh, the gobbledygook egg and maybe like people could have yes. being cracked out of the egg. And, like we're in a meeting and, everyone, and I was just trying to explain the gobbledygook egg and like a few people just looking at me like, going, are you okay? Do you like need a grown up at this point or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so we're also thinking about, 
maybe how can we bring some AEW prop builds in? I mean, what are the more contemporary prop builds? Do we think about um, the Heartbreak Hotel? Because obviously Shawn Michaels is in there. Or do we do him in the barbershop um, as well? So, yeah, we're sort of reassessing that. And I mean, there could be something huge around the corner um, that, that, that could also end up a prop build that yet perhaps hasn't, uh, hasn't been launched. So, um, yeah, you know... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing myself an injustice here. We've not mentioned, obviously, some of the, the newer um, announcements. So we mentioned the AEW guys, uh, but we've also announced Ken Shamrock, um, who's going to be the, the show in April. Um, he's going to be incredible. I, you know, I imagine his Q&A is going to be fantastic. Um, and also, um, Braun, sorry, I'm not allowed to call him Braun Strowman. Adam Scher, um, Adam Scher is going to be joining us, formerly known as uh, the Monster on One Ben, Braun Strowman. So... And again, someone who I really, really like because um, I love I love a wrestling monster. I love a wrestling monster. So I, I can't wait for my photo uh, with, with with Adam Braun um, as well. So, yeah, it's just cool. Yeah. So that's so we could be doing anything. We don't, we're not quite sure on prop builds yet, but I'd imagine things like the Spanish announce table and the WCW Nitro stage, they're definitely going to go ahead. Awesome. Ain't be very happy with that Nitro stage. <laughs> I, knew that I will be there. Way. I will. We, we we'll be there. Obviously, representing the network and stuff like that. And it's going to be just just to see all that kind of stuff would be really cool. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, I would hope one. I would hope you know. I'm sure this is one of those things where I'll just get people will just like just shake their heads at me in a meeting. But I'm sure in a, a, a flood of wrestling in the future, we could. Um, we we would hopefully one day get someone like Hulk Hogan as part of the show. And it'd be great if we could get Hell like. Yeah. Something like the Dungeon of Doom. Talk Hogan in the Dungeon of Doom prop builder be yes. awesome. Yes. You see, you, you, James, you think the way I think. I like this. Yeah. Maybe maybe we're just two L lads <laughs> that, that can't let go of the past. Well, oh, completely. Because I I, I'm currently re-watching uh, WCW from, um, from 93 upwards, and I'm into 1994 now where Flair is uh, obviously just after... Uh, Beating Vader at Super Brawl, you know, in the in the in that amazingly scary cage, um. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's you, good, and that's the, yeah. that's the beauty of the network. And you know, as a wrestling fan, I'm not sure what you guys think, but it's um, it's a weird one. I, I hear a lot of fans who are down on wrestling these days. I mean. I'm I'm not I, I'm going to wrestle I went to the last Wrestlemania and obviously I'm going to the next Wrestlemania so I still love WWE and I think they still do things like pay-per-views like Wrestlemania and Royal Rumble I'll still stay up for those pay-per-views uh, just because I think they're great and I, still, I think they still Me do too. very well yeah. um, Weekly TV I, I'll, I'll happily watch AEW Weekly TV because I, I find yeah. it a little bit more um, a little bit more you know it's, it's on for two hours once a week I can probably spare that time I mean oh, WWE yeah. I just find it a little bit it's it's just there's just too much going on and, and monotonous as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Regurgitated it is. Uh, kind of. AEW is a lot more Pritchard. digestible, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like um, Bruce Pritchard. You're like you're kind of hanging on to your kind of late eighties, early nineties stuff, and it's like, yeah, it's not really working out for me. No offense yeah. to the guys, in fairness, it's tough. Oh. Yeah. No, but that that's it. But the beauty of the network is, I mean, I, I wasn't really into WCW back in the day. But the beauty of the network now is that I can just go back and, and watch all of WCW in sort of chronological yeah. order. Yeah. Um, and that's what I mean. If I never saw another, if, if WWE and AEW stopped tomorrow and never made another product, I'd still be quite happy because I've got the network. I mean, there's, there's, exactly. I just, if I, I'm not sure if, if I started watching the network right now, if I would be able to watch it all back before, you know, before I, if I finally keeled off this mortal coil but so I mean I've, there's always good wrestling to watch even if you have to go back and I, and I find the older stuff um, I find the older stuff still brings out uh, the better reactions from me I still enjoy it probably a little bit more yeah, the nostalgia, you can't you can't uh, discount the nostalgia effect of no exactly. exactly it's, it's crazy just just to throw it in there look even you know even in 1993 and 1994 when they were supposedly the weaker brand the mid card stuff. I mean, the, the, watching there's a feud at the moment going on with uh, with, with Steve Austin, you know, and, and Dustin Rhodes, and good lord, like the work within the ring. Looking at Regal in his heyday, you know what I mean? With Steamboat, it's just it's a that was real work in the ring, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when I watched the. Uh... The, the first episode of Nitro not so long ago. Yeah. The, one, yeah. the one that's in the shopping mall and like yeah. Lex, Lu Lex Luger comes steering in. I was like, oh. That beautiful I, hairdo. <laughs> yeah, re reliving that because I never watched it back then. Obviously, I've heard about it through the years, but I've never really got to watch it. So, yeah, it's great, man. Just the, the Wrestling has become that big and there's that many options. It's yeah. it's just like music. You know, no, nobody wakes up and goes, oh, well, you know, music's crap at the moment. Just just, just, just find out which bit of it you like and just take that and concentrate exactly. on that because that, that's for you. I mean, you know, exactly. just 
just because you watch a bad film, you don't go off films, do you? Whereas some fans don't don't like what WWE are putting out on Raw, so they think wrestling's crap. It's not. It's not that you, you're overthinking it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, also I'm a heel in real life, but wrestling fans are weird, so yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> I, I, I think the one thing COVID has taught us is do what makes you happy. That's yes, cool. sir. hundred yes. percent. That, and I mean, that's that's something that you've got to give AEW and and, and and WWE credit for. I mean. Whether it was forced or whether it wasn't forced, everything else shut down. Music shut down, filmmaking shut down, TV making got shut down. I mean, like even, you know, primarily a lot of sports shut down. WWE and AEW work their asses off to get something out for us on a weekly basis. And they did it. Yeah. Was it as good? No. Was there was the not been any crowds there? Did it affect it? Yeah, of course it did. But it was it's you know, like pizza and sex, crap wrestling is better than no wrestling. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. so yeah, absolutely. So many people came in to me and said they'd nothing to do during the lockdowns and stuff. So they went back watching wrestling again and became wrestling yeah. fans again, you know. Um, so True. yeah, absolutely. Um, James, in terms of the information, where can people find tickets, information, <coughs> socials, all that kind of stuff, updates and everything? You know what? So, so that's one thing we are quite good at. We are we are on all of the uh, all of the uh, we're on the gram. Uh, so obviously we're on for love of wrestling, and you've obviously got the logo behind you. To, yeah. So they're they're the two logos, the one at the top and the one on the on the left. They're the logos that people should be looking for um, on Facebook. We're obviously under for the love of wrestling. Now we've got an official page, um, which is obviously for for the convention. We put our daily stuff on there, but we've also got a group where people can come on and, and chat. You'll know you've hit the right ones. The page is about forty thousand. The group's about ten fifteen thousand now uh, so you'll know you've hit the right ones uh, we're obviously on Twitter uh, under Full of a Wrestling and obviously we're, we're on Instagram as well um, so yeah we've also got a mailing list so you can go on to Full of a Wrestling I think it's full of, for the love of wrestling .co .uk, get yourself on the mailing list and you know we send out stuff uh, to the events and if you want to buy tickets to any of the shows um, get yourself on to well first of all you can go via for the love of wrestling .co .uk, and that'll take you through to Ticket Quarter uh, but yeah get your Get your, get your tickets bought for, for, for next year's show simply because, um, it's, it's, like I say, I, I, some people come there and they spend an absolute bloody fortune uh, meeting all of their heroes and they're running around like a blue arse fly trying to meet 40 people in one day. And you know what? They have the absolute time of their lives and they love it and, and got, you know, Godspeed or all, all power to them. Some people buy a, an entry ticket, they come in and they sit there all day watching the Q&As. They bring a pat lunch and we'll sit there all day watching the Q&As. They'll have the pat lunch, they'll watch more Q&As and then we'll put all the chairs away and then the live wrestling will start at night and then they'll watch that and then they'll go home and they'll get all of that for like 12, 12, 14 quid, whatever an entry ticket is. So get yourself, you know, get yourself on there. For people who want to do a bit of both, we've got diamond passes so you can come in early, get all your tickets, get all your photos and then get yourself a great seat. Um for, for, for the actual Q&As to start. Um, we do kids tickets as well, which are a lot cheaper. And if you're bringing kids under four, we're very passionate about bringing the next generation through. Uh, if you've got any children under four, they're getting completely free. Um, oh, so you know, awesome. it, it, so it's, it's there as well. It's a family-friendly show, but as I say, and we are doing something, you know, we're wrestling fans. We appreciate things like the Attitude Era. We, ex we appreciate extreme wrestling. As I say, we're going to be doing a show on the Friday night with the great guys at TMT Extreme. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that show because they um they do a lot of they do it's it's not just people putting light tubes over each other's head it's it's sort of like a, um, a, a three or four hour wrestling show but all with a little bit of everything they'll do a bit of extreme they'll do a bit of you know throwback sort of um classic wrestling you know they'll do catch count catch count you and everything you're looking for from wrestling they'll, they'll do a bit of it so um yeah so it's it's all there so come down and see it i mean Anybody who's ever been has, has, has never, you know, has never walked away there and not had a great time because there's enough there to find, find, find what you like. Yeah, it absolutely it sounds brilliant, and the fact that we'll make sure that we have all the links anyway. No, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have all the links in the episode anyway. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. But great. sounds absolutely awesome, and the fact that you're adding to it all the time and updating people and all it's it's very exciting for people. And as you, oh yeah, yeah, we're not we're not we're not finished yet. I've, um, yeah. we're definitely not finished. I mean, the lineup at the moment is phenomenal. It's it's, it's much mm. bigger. It's bigger than the first, um, but we're not finished yet. I've I less than two hours ago, I was on I was on a phone call. I, I, I can't uh, I can't go into it, but if if that comes off. That's going to be wow. Uh, that's going to be a, a, you know a big one uh, for people as well. So yeah, I mean that's the other great thing. I mean if it, if it makes sense, you know even if it makes sense to bring a guest over, we'll bring a guest over. We, we won't wait two years, three years, four years. If they want to appear in there free now, we'll get them on now. Yeah, awesome. 
absolutely brilliant. Well, listen, James, thanks for taking the time to come on to the show and brilliant. And we wish you all the best and success with the show on the back of an absolutely brilliant show. It was a shame the way COVID sort of derailed it for a year or two and stuff like that, but absolutely bang with a uh, back with a bang next April without a shadow of a doubt, an amazing lineup, brilliant props, and an absolute belter of a weekend in Liverpool for any wrestling fan to get over there. Yeah, really yeah, absolutely definitely. recommend it. I mean, COVID's just, get, COVID's just given us more time to plan more mischief. So, you know, it's, <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> yes, that's the way. That's the way. <laughs> absolutely. Well, listen, a pleasure. As always, Dynamo Podcast Network for the video. Videos, Spotify for audio versions of the show, and we will talk to you again real soon. Cheers, James. Thanks, guys.